Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. This week we are going to talk about the costs of building clones. Welcome back to the channel folks. Before I get started, just want to remind you to subscribe down below and also hit that bell icon to get my latest notifications. This week we're going to look at what it costs to build a clone guitar pedal. I have two clones here, my King of Tone clone and my Klon clone, which I think are you know, pedals that are often cloned by DIY pedal builders. So what I want to do is take you through the process of pricing out these components and building the pedals. So we're going to buy effects boards, we're going to buy uh, resistors, capacitors, and all our other necessary components, and then sum it up, see what it looks like, see how it compares to the cost of the actual pedal, and maybe other clones on the market. Now some quick assumptions here. I'm not going to build in the cost of buying, say, a soldering iron or maybe a drill press, things that you might need, might not need, uh, depending on where you buy your kits. Uh, you're probably going to need a soldering iron, I should say, but for this, we're just going to look at the boxes, the components, the knobs, switches, stuff like that. So to get started with our King of Tone clone, uh, what we're going to do is get an effects board. Just a quick aside, what I'm going to do over here on my left screen, which you can't see, is just have an Excel sheet where I'm going to tally up the cost of each component. So from Google, we're going to go to RuliWow, which is where I like to get my uh, King of Tone effects boards. It's called the Queen of Bone 2 is the latest one. It's uh, from a site, RuliWow.com, and you can see here. Queen of Bone 2, it's your PCB. It has uh, not only your PCB for your effects board, but it also has your um, breakouts for your two switches, which I like. So put together, if I can bring up a picture, it's gonna look like that on the back once we populate it and that on the front. Very nice board, I've used this a few times. The one thing I like about it, it has the onboard 18 volt charge pump built into it. So uh, take that into note when we're buying components as well. We have to make sure all our capacitors will, uh, will work at 18 volts or less. So adding this to the cart, $16 US. Uh, if I take a look at the final cart price, it's uh, $16 and uh, $3.99 shipping to Connecticut. We'll say for the sake of this that we're in the United States and we're gonna keep everything in US dollars. So let's say for our effects board, which I'm writing here now, for really wow, we are going to spend $20 US and I'm not gonna bother with $19.99, etc. We'll just say $20, keep this nice and simple. Okay. So we have our board, now the idea is we need to populate it. So to do that, we first need to figure out what components need to go onto this board. And luckily for us, RuliWow does provide a PDF build doc right here. They also provide a bill of materials. So we could go to the build doc and take a look at it, which is here. And it takes you through all the steps. And then if we continue to scroll down, we're gonna see our component list sorted by value. I believe in some cases, maybe it's in the Excel, they also give you a component list that is sorted by uh, number. So R1, R2, R3, R4, but by value is probably better in this case. So I'm gonna pull this over to my second screen and we're gonna go ahead and start getting uh, some values here. Where I buy most of my components, usually all of my components, is a site called Tata Electronics. Very good site, you can see here, lots of stuff to buy. You know, uh, you can get fuses, you can get, they sell their own PCBs, you can get uh, speaker terminals, three and a half millimeter jacks or a quarter inch plug jacks, etc. So I guess maybe the first thing we need to do is instead of looking at the components to populate the board, let's take a look at building the case. So we need the case, the switches, uh, the knobs, etc. audio jacks. So let's start with the case. This case is a 1590 BB case. So for that, we're gonna to go to hardware, enclosures and 1590 BB style. And let's get a colored one. You can save on a, you know, a, a raw aluminum one, but I like their, um, their painted ones. I guess they're powder coated. Let's just grab a white one for the sake of it. So we'll grab uh, or sorry, let's get a uh, 
black one here, just because it looks like those are in stock. That's been added to my cart. Now, we also need some knobs for our potentiometers. So let's go to our potentiometers here. Actually, I think that's also in hardware. We'll go to knobs. Let's just do something easy. Um, I like those MXR knobs here. Uh, yellow's fine. And we need one, two, three, four, five, six. So we'll take six knobs. Okay. And we need some LEDs. We need two LEDs. So usually three millimeter LEDs, and let's just get some red ones, two LEDs, and we need an LED holder, uh, so bezels. Uh, we need two of those. Let's, uh, let's just get some plastic ones, three millimeter bezel LED plastic holders, four cents each, good deal, we'll get two of those. Uh, looking at it as well, we're going to need uh, switches. So let's get some three pull double throw switches, three pull double throw. And it looks like 249 is the cheapest on the stomp switches. So let's get two of those. Uh, I think other than the DC and the audio jacks, we can probably flip over to their component list, but let's just take a look. Uh, we want, uh, Let's get some quarter inch plugs and jacks. Uh, there's one that I use that uh, seems to be the best. Uh, it's just right here, 6.35 quarter inch stereo jack, 45 cents each. We'll get two of those. And then we need a DC supply, DC jack. And the best one to get here, I like enclosed frame with screw and we'll get one of those. So I think that takes us pretty much to everything we have. Before we start building out the effects board, we've got our two switches, we've got our LED holders, our LEDs, we've got our enclosure, our knobs, and we've also got our audio in, audio out, and DC in jacks. Um, the next thing we're gonna do is go over to our components list or bill of materials from really Wow and we're gonna start getting our resistors because ordering resistors is pretty easy with Tata. So I'm just gonna to go to uh, quarter watt uh, carbon resistors. Um, some people will say that you can benefit from the, the blue metal resistors that they have a lower tolerance, uh, which if I actually go to the metal resistance, they're 1% tolerant where uh, carbons are 5% tolerant. I'm of the belief that you might as well just save your money and get the carbon ones. You're not really gonna notice a difference. Anything that is, you know, needs to be matched in resistance that is less than, uh, you know, that 1% is required over 5%, they're probably gonna give you a trim pot anyway. So I think you're probably safe with the quarter watt. You're not gonna notice any audible difference for, for the most part. So we're on the quarter watt 5% resistors page. And the one thing we need to remember is they do have a minimum order on resistors of 10. So in some cases, this will be good because we need more than one. Uh, in some cases, we just need one or two, so we have to order a few more, but we're talking a cent a resistor, so I think everything will be all right. So let's start populating. The first thing is 10K. The first resistor is 10K. So here's our 10K. We need four, so we'll get the minimum of 10. Uh, the next one is 1K, which is odd that they don't have them ordered like that on their page, but we'll get 10 there. We only need two. We need one meg if we scroll down one mega ohm we need one two three four five so we'll have 10 there as well 220k we have two of those 27k we have two of those 33k we have two of those and you can see i'm putting 10 in for each of these 47k we have two of those uh, 4k7 4K7 is up here, and we have two of those, and then we have four 6K8s right there. So those are all of our resistors, and we'll add those to the cart. Okay, and now we need to go to capacitors. Capacitors are a little bit harder to, uh, to order, 
just because we need to separate out film and ceramic and electrolytic, but let's just go about and do that next. So we are onto the film capacitors. I like using the box film capacitors when I have uh, high capacitance values, lower capacitance values. I'll sometimes use the Mylar film ones. Let's just price this out with polyester box film. These are more expensive, but again, we're talking the difference of maybe three or four cents a capacitor. So we need first 100 nano. So let's look here, 100 nano, and I'm not sure what the, here we are, polyester film, uh, 0.1 microfarad, which is 100 nano. And let's do uh, two of these. And we can order in twos, which is nice. Uh, we need 10 nano next, and we need one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, ten 10 nanos. Uh, 10 nanos, here we are. Uh, I like these JB ones, so we'll get 10 of these. They're cheaper. Uh, and then we have one microfarad film and one microfarad film. So we have two one microfarad films. Uh, so we need to actually go to up here and go one microfarad capacitor. We're probably going to get a lot of electrolytics, which you can see, but we want this monolithic ceramic. I think that's, oh, sorry. We have a polyester film type here. Let's use this one. And we want two of those. Okay. On to, uh, let's do ceramics next. So let's go ceramic disc capacitors. We only need two 100 picofarad ones, so we can find those pretty quickly. Uh, we need to order those in groups of 10, so let's get 10 100 picofarads. And then finally to our electrolytics, and we need to remember with our electrolytics, like all of our other capacitors, but specifically with the electrolytics, is that the voltage value is going to be rated for over 18 volts because we do have a charge pump in the King of Tone, and we don't want to blow up our capacitors. So we do need one 100 microfarad capacitor. And let's find that. So here's our 100 microfarads. Where are we? Oh, must be on the next page. 100 microfarad capacitors. So we don't need 100 volts. That's overkill. 35 would probably do us here. Uh, yeah, let's do 35 volt 100 microfarad capacitors and we need uh, one of those. And then let's go to 10 microfarad capacitors, which is back on the previous page. Some high voltage ones there, we don't need those. Scroll all the way down. Uh, 10, 35 volt. Um, you could buy 50 volts for the same price, but 35 volts are likely going to be smaller and a little bit easier to work with. So let's get the 35 volts and we need three of those, we'll add those to the cart. And finally, one, one microfarad capacitor, which should be up here at the top. And one microfarad capacitor. And it looks like the smallest we can get is a 50 volt one. And let's just add that. So that's all our capacitors, all our resistors. Let's look at diodes. So diodes, let's look at just a standard diode. Now this calls for one N, uh, sorry, one S 1588s and MA 856s. You're not gonna be able to find those, but in the really wow, or sorry, you sh I should say, you don't really need them. You're not gonna, uh, you're not gonna have an easy time finding them because they're hard ones to find because they are kind of those king of tone um, diodes, but we can find a good substitute. Really well actually puts it in the notes of what you could use. If I scroll up and see what they're recommending here, you could use 1N4148s, 1N4001s. So let's use those. So let's go with, if I go back to my sheet here, uh, 48. Let's use eight uh, 1N4001s. 
And then for the 1S1588, let's go the 1N4148, I think. 1N4148 switching diode. Let's get four of those. We also need 1N5817s. It's a shocky diode. And we only need 13, 14, 15. We need three of those. Okay, now potentiometers. Potentiometers are next. We're gonna go potentiometers and rotary. Uh, for the most part, it looks like we're using linears and uh, logarithmic. So let's start with our linears. We need uh, 25K or thereabouts and 100K. So if I type in A25K, let's see what that brings us. Okay, so we don't have a 25K here on Teda, but that's no problem. Let's go back and see what there is that's close. Again, you're not gonna need exactly 25K. Uh, if you can find a 20K, uh, we're probably gonna be all right. If I keep scrolling, 10K, 10K, 20K, and it looks like, yeah, Oh, we do have a 25K linear here, 25. Oh yeah, so there is 25K. 25K on linear pot, PC mount. So I like using these PC mount ones. They're really good for the boards that are provided. You just put them in, solder them, no extra wires, etc. cetera. Uh, so let's get those. We need two 25Ks. And while we're still on the linear page, let's go up to the 100Ks. Uh, maybe overshot it there. Let's go back one page. And 100K linear. Oh. 100K linear. 100K linear. Let's look for the one that's PC mount. Uh, I also like the, instead of the knurled head, uh, where the knobs I bought have the set screw, I want the solid head. So let's go here, 100K. Uh, you can buy 6.35 or six millimeter. Let's go six millimeter. I find they're a little bit easier with the, the knobs I bought, but in any case, both should work. And we need two of those. Now our volume is 100K logarithmic. So if I do a search of A100K, There's our six millimeter 100K PCB mount. We'll get two of those. And then finally on the inside, there's a presence trim pot. So let's go to our resistors, sorry, our potentiometers and go to trimmers. And I think we can probably use cement uh, potentiometers here. And these are the ones that I like. And we need 50K. And 50K cement, 3362 type, and that's actually what they recommend. And we need two of those. Okay, we're almost to the end here. Uh, what we need now is uh, some ICs. So we need our 4558IC, which is just, uh, I think, a dual package op amp. Uh, yep, and we can get that for 20 cents. There's a few different options. Let's just go with uh, this one here. It looks like it's in stock. And we need two of those. And then another big one is the charge pump chip, which is going to be a TC1044. And you wanna make sure when you're getting your charge pump chip for any audio, -ish, uh, any audio device that it has that SCPA at the at the bottom of it or at the end of it. Um, this will essentially, if you don't have that one and you have just, I believe it's the CPA, you're gonna get some wine in your signal. So make sure it says SCPA and you need one of those chips. Okay. Uh, the only other thing that we haven't got here is wire. So let's get some uh, wire. 
and let's go some 22 hookup solid. We don't care about color. Maybe I'll get uh, two feet of black and two feet of white. Should be enough to do anything you have and give you two different colors as well. And then also on the effects board, we do need a, a dip switch. So let's do a dip. And it's actually going to be a four way dip. And let's see if I can find it. Eight positions, four positions. So we're gonna need one of these. And also while I'm here, it's probably good to socket our ICs. So let's get some eight pin sockets. Uh, we need three of them. Uh, eight pin socket, let's get three of those. And then also maybe to connect the pins, um, connect the board from your um, switches to your effects board, we can get some header pins as well. They're cheap and it makes that a little bit easier. Uh, so header pins, we don't need doubles. We could buy a strip. Yeah, let's buy a strip of 40 and we'll just get one. So that takes us to the end of everything on the components list. Uh, I don't think we need anything else to get this done. It's 170 uh, items. Let's check out the final price. So our final price for components to build this is 2581. Now, of course, you still need your soldering iron. You might need a drill press to drill out your holes in your enclosure. Uh, you're probably going to need solder as well. Uh, maybe a few other items, pliers, etc., cutters. Uh, but 2581 American for the uh, for the components. So I have to create an account to uh, get the shipping cost. I don't want to log into my account right now. So let's just use this calculate shipping cost up here, and let's pretend like we're in Connecticut, like the other uh, like the other um, really wow delivery, and it looks like 399 here as well. So we're now at 2980. So I don't even really have to show you a spreadsheet. I can just put it up on the screen. It looks like the cost to build this King of Tone uh, in US dollars is $50. $50 US, that's $30 for the components and $20 for the board. And that includes shipping. Um, again, we're still missing some of the, the items that we need to build it. But if you buy those once, you'll have them for every build. So that is essentially the cost of building the King of Tone. Now, of course, the diodes are a little bit different and people will argue that if you don't have the diodes, it's not the King of Tone. I'll tend to disagree. I think you could find something that has the similar curve as the diodes that uh, King of Tone or Analog Man is using to put in yours and you might spend an extra 10 or $15 on top of what I've priced out here. So that's what it costs for the King of Tone clone. You think, you know, that's much better than say, $400 US that sometimes you hear of for the actual thing. Let's just take a quick look on Reverb and see what the King of Tone clones go for right now. So I've just logged on to Reverb and I'm looking at King of Tone uh, clones. You can see here, you know, shipping to US and US dollars. Uh, you can see anything from as low as 115 to uh, even 306. Now you have to remember the people that are making these do deserve something for their time. You know, this isn't negligible time. Like I said, they've also made an investment into, you know, the the soldering irons, the drill presses, etc. A lot of them have graphics on it, so there's some time put into doing the graphics. So, you know, for an upsell of, you know, 50 to 100 dollars, it's not that crazy when you think it could take three or four hours to build one of these, uh, depending on what your skill level is, uh, especially if you're going into designing the top of a pedal as well. So Definitely keep that in mind. Um, we're gonna do the same thing with the Klon clone. Uh, this is from a, a board from a different manufacturer. I'm not gonna go through the step-by-step -step on Tata on this one, but I am going to uh, do it off camera and then show you the results. Um, I will say that uh, the effects board from this is from Pedal PCB. It is called the Cliche Mini, which is their uh, 
Clon clone or Archer clone, if you want to say it. So um, we'll get the price on that and I'll show you the totals when we get back. So I've just completed building out my cliche mini. Uh, I'm actually going to pull over the document so you can see what I used. This is from pedalpcb.com, the cliche mini board. And you can see we have our parts list here, which I just used to populate it. It also comes with a schematic and a little bit of uh, a picture of what the inside is going to look like and as well as your drilling template. So if I just back up here, I'll show you the price. It is $12 for the Cliché Mini because it doesn't come with the pinout for the uh, three-pole double throw switch. If I um, take a look, there might be a related product. Here it is, three-pole double throw switch for Cliché Overdrive. Uh, it's a dollar coming soon. We'll just add a dollar on top of it. So if we think $12, $13, for the Cliché Mini effects boards. Um, I'm gonna try to calculate shipping. It wasn't working for me earlier. Uh, we can also guesstimate if we need, need, uh, need to at the time. So tax is zero. It's not giving me a shipping. Let's assume that we're paying at least $4 shipping. So we're gonna say $17 total US for the board. Um, and that would be shipped to Connecticut similar to where we're shipping everything else, even though I'm not in Connecticut. Moving over to the components. So I have built out my components list here. It came in um, around the same price as when I built the Klon. Uh, we're looking at, at $20.97 for parts and $3.49 shipping to Connecticut. Uh, a couple of notes here with the Klon. Uh, we need germanium diodes, which cost a little bit more. You can see those here the 1N34As, which I think uh, do a great job in the Klon. Um, other items that we might need to look at, we again have a charge pump in the Cliché Mini, so we had to keep our, um, our capacitors above um, the 18 volt, um, it, above the 18 volt mark to make sure we don't explode any. Um, looking down, we have an interesting potentiometer, a dual taper potentiometer. So it's 100K, but it's actually two uh, potentiometers in one. That's why you see, if, uh, if I open it up here, six leads, one, two, and you can't see the third one in the back, but then three in the front. And that just means that it's going to uh, allow you to uh, essentially use this as two potentiometers in one. I went with a die cast enclosure again. Uh, this one requires a 125B style enclosure. And then I think everything else is pretty standard. I bought some wire again, two feet, two different colors, and then all of our quarter watt resistors, which stepping through, and our capacitors, electrolytic and film capacitors, and then a couple of ceramic capacitors. So again, here we're looking at a cost of $24.46 plus the $17 that I've said for the effects board. So that comes in, uh, we'll say 25 and 17 is $42. So a little bit less than the, the uh, King of Tone, which makes sense. This has got two effects in it, uh, a few more components, a more expensive board more or less. But yeah, so we're looking at uh, whatever I said there, $42 to build a Klon clone. Now, what do Klons usually go for? This is a good question. So if we were to look at, say, Reverb again, and let's take a look at a Klon. Uh, we're probably not gonna find uh, any real Klons. Oh, maybe we will. Klon Gold, $4,066, good deal. Um, but for Klon clones, it looks like they're pretty much in the 150, maybe a little bit more price range. 190, 160, 190. So not a bad deal. Uh, the other thing here is you need to know uh, there's lots of manufacturers who make clones. So you can think of like the Archer. Uh, so the Silver Archer available for around 110, um, but if you wanna buy it new, $200, still a little bit pricey. You also have the EHX Soul Food, which I've just brought up. Uh, this one sells for around $86. 
some people like it, some people don't. Um, I personally like the soul food, I have one. Um, I have this as well, I've used them both. Um, not sure which one I prefer just yet, um, but uh, yeah. So you could get the soul food for $86 and save yourself some hassle of building a clone clone. Or if you want the experience of building a clone and you want to be able to tinker with it after the fact or change components on the fly, you can probably use something like this. So hopefully you guys enjoyed that. That is the cost of clones. You can get this one built for about $50 US and you can get this one built for just slightly less at a little over $40 US. Um, for me, I think, you know, that is not a lot to build a pedal. Uh, the experience of building pedals is fun as well. So highly recommend doing it. Um, you know, you can get yourself in deep too and build a lot like I have and then you have a lot of money sunk into pedals and you end up having to sell them or give them away and make some Christmas gifts out of them. But, uh, you know, it's a fun thing to do. It's inexpensive when compared to buying, some, you know, some of the big pedals like, you know, your King of Tone or your Klon. You know, we saw this for about $4,000. So I definitely recommend building them. I don't think the cost of clones are too much. Love to hear your responses on it. Let me know what you guys think and we'll talk next week. Remember to like, subscribe, see you again sometime soon.